Hey everyone, what we're going to be doing today is Polax versus Halberd. And I thought this would be a fun one to play with today. We're going to talk about the different parts of the pole arms as well as some of the use of them. So on the Halberd, both the Halberd and the Polax are battle axes. Their variations, a different kind of a family tree. They both have a top spike. They both have an axe. Whereas the pole axe has the hammerhead and the halberd has a back spike. This would be more for dragging people down, hooking them. Uh, if I was in a line and both of these are melee weapons. But the nice thing about this one is the halberd could be used in a line, whereas the pole axe is more of a individual fight kind of weapon. The reason I say that is this one, I can do a lot of hooking and chopping straight down. But if he goes to block that and I turn it around, I can pull him off balance to get that in there. He can do the same thing. Don't get me wrong on that. It's just when you see pole axes discussed in historic documents, more often they're referred to the fighting in one-on-one -on -one situations than mass melee. Uh, halberds and bills work really nice in mass melee. The nice thing about the back hook is it's also very useful for taking people off horses or tripping up the horse. So we have the head, we have the ax, the spike, and the back hook. We have the spike or dag, the hammer, and the ax. Now this one also has two little spikes on the side. So this has two little spikes on the side. And these represent sharper spikes that you could use for hooking in armor or other pieces of equipment to disrupt their balance. The other nice thing about weighty weapons like this is if somebody is in armor, I can hit the armor and deform it enough to make movement difficult. And then on the back of the weapon, we have the Q. And both of, this one has a back spike, this one does not. The back end is the Q, and he can still use that even without a back spike. Traditionally, it would have a back spike or some kind of weight on there, but who's to say that every single one did? What we're going to do is I'm going to start in a high guard up like this. John is going to start, actually, John's going to start in that guard. I'm going to start in a low guard like this and I'm actually I'm keeping it off to the side for a specific reason go for my head on this side okay ready yep I've got my cue for beating it to the side go ahead do that again I step under it and I can beat it to the side or do it again I can step the other way to drive it down and that's why I'm taking a low guard since he took a high guard if he took that low guard and I started with that high guard, I have things I can do. And I want you to play with these and think about them here. So for here, I'm going to bring it forward with my cue, my butt spike, then transfer into the target. So we do that again. And that's why don't just volta stable, step to the side. Got it. Right? Now he can still cover that, and that's where we get our coverage in to really try to capture balance. So let's look at what just happened. Okay. He was in a low guard. I was in a high guard. I actually widened my hands up just a little bit on my halberd because I wanted the extra space to be able to drive that point in. Well, I don't want to be too close because mm -hmm. I'm here. And that's what you're worried about, yep. or a straight thrust to the face. So as I come into the face, I then pull that down, then I bring my top hand 
to my back hand with a strike at the arm. Let's do that again. So I'm here. Mm -hmm. Now, he's smart. He sees this coming. As I, I threaten, he starts to cover. I shift. He steps towards the head of my weapon with his cue and then hits me in the head. Boom. So there's the first part. Let's do that again. Okay. Ready? Ready. Now, yeah, I have a spike at his head, but did you step with that? Hmm? Did you step? With a cut? Yeah. No. I want you to step with the cut. Sure. Let's do it again. Ready? Ready. Oh, look what happens when we step with the cut. Mm -hmm. And that really throws off my ability to go to where I want to be. Let's do that again. Ready? Ready. So that's why I need to get my action. Now, this goes back to the half sorting that we talked about in another class. Let's do that again. Ready? Ready. I come in. He covers that. Now, if I try to just lift up the point to protect myself, no, keep going. Mm -hmm. He's hooked that, and he's sitting down onto it, and because he's stepping, he's taking my whole body off angle because I was trying to lift up the head of my axe. If I want the head of my axe up, what do I do? You push down with the other hand. Yeah, so let's try that. Ready? Ready. And that takes it right out of the bath there. And that's, that's where I get. Mm -hmm. Then I just stab back into his throat with the back spike. Let's do that again. Okay. Ready? And this one I'm doing with the Volta Stop because I don't have time to cover that. Now, what's the weakness I have right here? Um, would that be the angle that you're at and... No, it would be my groin. Yeah. Just drive the hammer straight up into yeah, my crotch. And then just pop that right on yep. up there. I, I promise you, if you hit somebody in the crotch with the hammer of a poleaxe, you will get their attention. I do not doubt that at all. Even with armor. So, ready? Ready. Here, here, here. Yep. Yeah, I can hit you, but if you volt the stable, no, the other way. Yep. I can glance it off my armor there. And I still take that. Even if you don't hit me with that, you bring this up for a thrust to the crotch. Right. Yep. So it can either be a hammer blow or a thrust to the crotch. Because I have the multiple tools at the top line here. If I'm out of range for the one tool, I'm probably going to be in range for the second tool. Correct. And we always line up our targets. I was about to ask on that, actually. If you don't mind. Yeah, please. We're not, we always talk about lining up our targets so that, um, because the other person's smart, they don't want to get hit. So we set a next line. If I step to cut to your head, uh -huh. if I just do that, well, I'm not lined up to anything else over here, right? Right. But if I also do that same thing here, yep. I'm now lined up to your leg, right? Yep. Or then, your no, cut. stay there, stay yep. there. And if I try to get out of the way, now you're lined up to my crotch. To, to your crotch, yep. Because you're lined up to the inside of my thigh, not, not the, the outside. outside. And if I'm in armor, this is another thing. The queeze, the thigh cover, it's called a queeze. The queeze stops about here, about mid-thigh. But because it stops at about mid-thigh, let's say, let's do that again. Mm -hmm. So you strike at me, and I set that aside. I'm here, I've got this, and I might be able to take the thrust on the outside of my armor. Mm -hmm. But if I step back, you're now going to the inside. Inside, once again. And I have no protection on that part of my thigh. And if you go all the way through because you don't hit me, now you have a hook. I was going to ask. Yeah. I've got that ability there now. And if you do that with the axe side... You now have the beak of the axe driving into the unprotected back of the knee. So this gives you lots of hooking opportunities. But another way to look at the adding to that here, we're also in a way lining up each individual tool as part as part of that, right? Yes. 
So we're not just lining up targets, we're now lining up tools when we look at things like uh, the pole arms like these. Correct. Right? When they have multiple pieces, it doesn't take a lot to line them up. Mm -hmm. But I need to remember the mechanics of this fight, which is if I want my head down, I don't necessarily push my head down, I pull my cue up, and that forces my head down. Um, I'm going to hit the head of your weapon. So, this is me pushing down on it. Ready? Ready. We get that. Almost sounded like something broke. Almost. But, look at this. Whoa. You see how that pulled him Jeez. straight down? Do that again. We can go back up. With my lead hand, I drive him out. With my cue hand. And then I'm lined up for another action. So, it's not about the strength of your arm in pushing the weapon down. It's about using the mechanics of the lever to move the other end. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So let's go from the top. I'm up high. He's down low. Don't do anything. Mm -hmm. There's my win. Now he's going to win it. And they keep going down, go yeah. around to throw me off balance. And because, let's do that again. Yep. When I say hold freeze. Yes, sir. Okay, now he's got that coverage. Go ahead and hit me with your axe. Just bring your axe head over. You don't need to go that extreme. Mm -hmm. don't, don't exaggerate it that much. Just, he leaves my weapon, right? You yep. see that? Do that again. Yes, he hits me, but he leaves my defense in place. But if he uses his cue to move his, the head of his weapon, he throws me off balance and has a cleaner strike at me. Yeah? True. So that's why it's so important that we use the mechanics of leverage, not just the strength of your arms. That being said, you're going to have to work to be able to swing these because these suckers are heavy. Very. So let's do it again. This time I'm going to win. And I just broke his arm and then stabbed him in the throat, just to make sure. And what I did is, if I was just going for a straight blow, my hands would be here. Because, as Filippo Vadi would say, strike him mightily. No, I'm sorry, not Vadi. Um, Jute de la Hache. The uh, French manuscript for Polax, written by an Italian master. With a mighty blow. Strike him with a mighty blow. This would be my mighty blow. But I've seen the way he's holding it. I understand what he's got. He could easily just knock that to the side. Step towards your left. Mm -hmm. And then, this, yeah, I've got, I can be in trouble. So, instead of being here with my hands kind of close together, I actually extend my hand a little bit. And the reason I do that is I can bring this forward, but then as he goes to cover, I pull that down, and that lines me up perfectly for his arm. And then I can stab him. All right, one more time. So we start here. I slide up. I cue. Boom. But now we're going to figure out how he protects himself. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Prefer to avoid the broken arm? I would prefer to avoid the broken arm. And the tracheotomy? And the tracheotomy is really the big part there. I can survive a broken arm. So, I come through. He goes for the bait. I strike it. He now steps to his right and uses his cue. But, how do you get your cue down? I actually have to lift my um, right hand. Yeah, no. Uh, just use your cue to defend yourself. Okay. He's still in line. Go back. Now use the head of your axe. That also removes the target. So in the action of the offense, you have a defensive void of the target built in. And if you don't think about that, you're always going to leave something in line. You're always going to leave something there. And what's the best defense? Don't be there. Be it, do an avoidance. So let's do that again. So I'm here. I widen up. I thrust. I cut. He covers and he hits me in the head. So, 
Let's do it one more time. You win this, okay? Now that was too much, uh, too much, too much Q. Yep. Because as you pulled it down, you drove me into your leg, which gives yep. me a hook. So use more of the head. This right here. To do the action. You ready? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now there's nothing there for me to hit. Mm -hmm. Feel the difference? I do. One more time, so you're successful. Okay. Not so that Q position there. Yeah. And it's really hard to not use the Q because you see this attack coming in and you want to beat it out of the way as quickly as possible. Quick is not always the right answer. And that's a hard thing to wrap your head around, especially mm -hmm. when you have an axe coming at you. Would you agree? Yeah. So we're here. I do this. I begin my action. He pushes that down and then hits me. Good. Now I'm going to counter it. Okay. Ready? Ready. I open up for my preparation. I thrust by sliding through my cue hand. Step. Use that. Now, as he goes here, I push my cue up with a Volta Stable. And by pushing my cue up, I release the hook of my halberd off the shaft of his pole axe. 